course set, now goes in motion. Roger, back to throw, has a man open in the end zone, caught, touchdown, drop, jumped in the end zone, Jackie Smith, oh, bless his heart, he's got to be the sickest man in America. In January of 1979, the Cowboys' reign as world champions ended with a crushing defeat in Super Bowl XIII. Every year, NFL Films would do a highlight reel, and that highlight reel was a big deal. The highlight film was an important promotional tool for the club. It was Bob Ryan and Doug Todd, the Cowboys PR director, who were responsible for crafting this film. In the 1970s, the highlight films were the most important thing we did. In a way, it was a bunch of lies. It was almost like uh, the law according to Joe Stalin. The basic idea was a recreation of that season that was very pleasing to the team. The challenge was, what are we going to say about this uh, team that lost the Super Bowl? Bob proposed champions die hard. I remember Doug saying, I don't think we like the idea of the team dying. From his office in Philadelphia, Ryan struggled to think up a title that Cowboys brass wouldn't kill. A title that captured what the Super Bowl defeat could not diminish, the franchise's extraordinary popularity. The Cowboys were the most popular team in the country. Everyone knew it. When you went to other stadiums, there were Cowboy fans all over with number 12 jerseys. They were always the second game of doubleheaders on CBS. They were on Monday Night Football more than any other team. And then it came to me. I looked at what you'd call national teams, the teams that everyone loves and hates the New York Yankees, and Notre Dame. They were the national team in college. The Dallas Cowboys, the national team. And then it came to me, America's team. America's team. When I was editing America's team, I had complete tunnel vision of what I was doing because I knew I had something that I thought was going to be great. The fruition of the highlight film was five days. It only took five days. I knew what I wanted. It didn't become a jigsaw puzzle. It just fit all perfectly the minute I started to edit. John Facenda was our narrator. He was a maestro at turning ordinary words. This one simple fact tipped the balance of the game in the Cowboys' favor. Into really good words. He had read it the night before. Yeah, I like your alliteration as always. When I came in the booth, he said, Bobby, you've given me a great horse to ride. I hope I can do it. Cowboy goals are lofty. Win the National Football Conference title and then the Super Bowl. This is usually attainable, for as their fans well know, the sum total of their stars make up a galaxy. Their record is envied, and their innovations copied down to the last glamorous detail. They appear on television so often that their faces are as familiar to the public as presidents and movie stars. They are the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. The highlight film comes out. Bob Ryan, NFL Films, and we're called America's team. I don't know how it caught on so fast, but it caught on like wildfire. America's team, they call them. But America's team badly needed to win today. The Dallas Cowboys, symbol of virtue. It really took off. Obituaries were being prepared to tell us of the approaching demise of America's team. I didn't know it was going to take off like it did, but it sure did. And all the way games, most of the newspapers wrote, America's team's coming to town. 
Wait, wait, all these guys calling themselves America's team. Who do they think they are? It wasn't as though Bob Ryan was going to call somebody America's team that year. And it could have been the Tampa Bay Bucks, but it ended up being the Cowboys. The Cowboys are America's team. The Cowboys were America's team before people called them that. It was just really astute of the guy to point this out. 